Welcome back to the Final Fantasy 13 commentary. In this episode, we're checking in with some new protagonists, the leaders of Rebellion. So yeah, we're gonna see more of why this actual firefight is going on, just sort of ran into it. The opening didn't really do much to explain that, though I didn't really think about that the first time I played this. But yes, we're getting some nice, completely non subtle propaganda explaining some backstory. There's a purge. A very illogical purge, but whatever. Anyways, we're being introduced to character number three, Snow Villiers. These people need heroes. Snow is Kind of a weird deconstruction of the archetypal hero, honestly. Like, it's kind of weird. I actually kind of think that Final Fantasy XIII, with its different intros, kind of does a subversion of the standard Final Fantasy kind of plot points. Like, in this case, having a rebellion, and then I'm not sure what to classify Lightning and Saz as, but. It's definitely a lot like Final Fantasy VII's opening. Um, and then there's another bit coming a bit later. and Yeah, it just kind of covers a lot of ground with classical Final Fantasy stories. And ah, I kind of like that, especially this one. Although I, there's a thing I would have kind of liked to have seen done differently. And I'll get to that in a bit, I think. But yeah, snow. A lot of people hate snow. Like, it, it's crazy. Like, people think call him an idiot and all sorts of stuff. He's annoying. People equate him to, like, Waka from Final Fantasy X and stuff like that. Nah, I don't know. I'm, I don't really have all that strong feelings about this character. But, uh, this I, don't know, I find him overall pretty likable. These characters, on the other hand, I just, besides maybe Guy with Red Hair, I never bothered to remember these names, but a lot of these characters are just completely, I don't get their purpose, like why are they there? They're just sort of annoying, besides LeBro and Red Haired Guy, who actually have a degree of maturity and also kind of balance each other and have some sort of level of personality, but yellow-haired guy and blue-haired guy, what are they even? Gonna pay for this. Anyways, just as before, avoid fights. There's no reason to fight. But, again, not always possible. Anyways, these characters, in case you couldn't tell, uh, Godot and Lebro don't have a health bar for whatever reason. It's weird, because they do have a health bar that decreases, so there's clearly a percentage but they keep the number hidden for whatever reason. I can't even, like, why? What's the point? They clearly have a number. Anyways, Snow at this point in the game has hand grenades. And in a few situations, it's not the best option, but it's almost always the best option to use hand grenades. They almost always do three times as much damage as a normal hit. So in any situation, basically, they're the best damage you can deal. The only downside is they have a bit of a delay, but they have area of effect damage as well. Um, Yo, boss. The That's only other plan. thing really noteworthy, because Godot here, them. I think his name hey, is, um, he just we sort of does damage, plans. but Lebro actually has an infinite supply of potions, so you don't have to worry about healing in this part. Same plan as always. Hit him hard, and hit him again. Yeah, this kind of boisterous overconfidence thing kind of sets up the tragedy going on here because there's everyone sort of dying around them. Hey, I can tell which one of those characters is important. You all okay? 
I remember their names now. Yeah, so Maki and Yuj. I both fi find them very annoying and useless characters. <laughs> also, Maki looks Go like hard. Jack no from Jack today. and Dexter. Just saying. We'll clear you a path out of here, so be ready Wait. to. Oh good, generic you. people, they'll help and I'm sure they won't die. Could help. Yep. Please, let us help. Let us die for your cause. What is this cause again? Volunteers front and center. Here, take this one. This one. Here you go. So yeah, they're organizing some sort of militia, I suppose. And this character, this character right here, known only as Mum, or Mother, I believe. Yeah. I just, I think she's the worst character in the game. Like, not as in, she's like a bad character, she's just a terrible person. And I'll get to that very shortly. Her whole thing is like, Mums are tough, Mum power, or whatever. But how does she express this? By taking a gun and abandoning her son so that she might die and leave him stranded. It's the last one, boss. All right, last one. Somebody take it. <laughs> now this kind of spoils that he's important by giving him a name. Yeah. And this is Vanil, another character people hate as it happens. Which comes to shove. There's been a, a lot of different reasons for why they say she's just too bubbly, too otherworldly. Her Australian accent sucks, even though the voice actress is actually Australian, so... But yeah. I've, in case you haven't noticed, there's a lot of very hated characters in this series. And yet... For whatever reason, they made sequels. Lots and lots of sequels. Time to go, kiddo. Ah, she's like, oh yes, okay, everything's okay now because she said time to go, kiddo, so he's gonna just go, I guess. Seriously, this is a terrible person, like on a level of a terrible human being. Anyway, it's just a matter of some, doing some fights now. Avoidable fights, but fights. Something you gotta love about linear progression of stories is that the kind of the purpose here is that to clear out all the soldiers so that the survivors can get past, but you can just ignore the fights and then it just progresses anyways because I guess that's just how it is. Heroes anyways, this is Snow's mini boss, the Beta Behemoth. I believe it's the Beta Behemoth. There's lots of alphabet related behemoth. We fight and we survive. Anyways, this is a completely mindless fight because no matter how much damage you take, LeBro will heal you. So just mash auto battle. There's literally nothing else to this. I'm actually not sure what purpose this mini boss is meant to serve. Like, the. Uh, Lightning and Saz's final, or final boss, mini boss, uh, was supposed to be teaching them chain gauges, that kind of stuff, so, and it served that purpose. What is this behemoth doing? It's, I guess just serving the story purpose, but it came out of nowhere, so it didn't really need to exist, so I don't know. Anyways, if you want any interest, but it charges up its power. And it gets more and more power, so say like 25% powered up, 50% powered up, and then get more powerful each time, so 
if the battle lingers too much it will become a serious threat but you'd have to actually not fight in order for that to happen so yeah like I'm pretty sure if it gets to 100% he'll just kill you instantly because it attacks will do like um, I don't know four times as much damage as it normally does which is like 80 something already so yeah random slow-mo oh he failed and now he can't do anything and even though this clip thing clearly has a machine gun it has to charge up a giant lizard to kill him because of course if just used a machine gun he'd already be dead and they couldn't get her to fire a rocket at it because see she's a useful character but she doesn't have a name oh no she's gonna die isn't she yeah, playing with subtitles kind of ruins a few things, doesn't it? Oh no, I got hit by the shockwave of an explosion that was quite far away. I'm dead now. And they're over there. So I'm kind of wondering what made it so Snow was completely unharmed by that. Did she just absorb all the shrapnel or what? Also, I like how the people who are falling are ruining it for people who aren't. Because some people are actually just stuck on that bridge and then they get hit by someone who is falling. Good job, people. And I just want to call attention to a moment back there. Snow actually ran down the bridge as it was falling in order to catch Mother. And that's a really cool stunt, gotta say. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, so she just gives up and dies. And she's like, oh, get him home. And he's like, oh, yeah, him. Of course, we know that it was Hope because Hope screamed. And... There's your conflict. Now, I think it would have been a really effective scene if those had all been throwaway characters. Like, Snow had just died there. Which he logically should have because Mother fell off there and she's dead. Look, and there was no bottom. It was just pure black. But, nope. They survived. But I just think it would have been so effective if it just shown how hopeless a fight of by having all these characters just die at this moment. I think it would really show like the effectiveness of it, I don't know. That's just me. See you next time.